Mark Rogers, TV Talk in Mississippi State Football. We bring in former MSU quarterback Matt Wyatt. You can catch him on Super Talk Mississippi. So that's either on uh, supertalk.fm or you can download the app, Super Talk Mississippi. His show is head to head. You can catch him three to six Central Time each and every weekday. Matt, how are you doing tonight? Great, Mark. Good to see you. Good to hear you again. Definitely. So I covered uh, Matt at Mississippi State as his Bulldogs uh, were vying for SEC Western Division champions and finally got to the the mountaintop there in 1998 and played a national championship team in Tennessee down to the wire in the last few minutes of that game. So Matt, uh, w- before we started to record, I probably should have been recording that conversation. <laughs> the people that wanted to reminisce uh, uh, 20 years gone by would have uh, had a good time listening to us uh, kind of go down the results of the games in 1997 and 98 in particular. When you look back on a career at Mississippi State, you got to be proud considering not a lot of people get to experience what you experienced competing at that level with those kind of athletes on the field, with that kind of tradition, both at Mississippi State and in the clubs that you faced each and every week. Uh, that you, There has to be something that you see each and every week in the games that you cover that make you from time to time think back uh, upon your career as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no doubt about it, Mark. It's, it's one of those things where uh, it never kind of leaves you. You know, um, when you say, okay, well, it's 20 years ago. I played 20 years ago. Well, that's a long time, right? There's nothing else I remember hardly about 20 years ago, but I certainly remember, you know, running out there on the field and what it felt like and, you know, and some of the good things. I will tell you that, you know, you talk to former teammates and players and I have the same experience in that. Unfortunately, you remember more vividly the bad things that happened, the games you didn't win, you know, the plays you didn't make, because those things kind of haunt you uh, a lot over the years. Even when you talk to guys who did mostly good things, you know, really great players that went on and, you know, had award-winning careers or played in the NFL, they still will tell you, yeah, boy, that one throw I didn't make, it just haunts me. I can't, you know, I've never gotten over it. And or that one fumble, I, I let the ball go, you know. So guys never forget those things because you're so programmed to try to do everything right and to make no mistakes. So the mistakes really stick with you over the years. And that's one thing I think a lot of people, you know, don't don't realize about the former players. And so, um, yeah, the perspective now when you watch a game or you follow a team, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting. You're right. It's a very unique yeah, unique thing. I know what they're going through. I know how it feels. But I think that's the reason that in radio, television, other areas, that people who had the fortune to get to play and kind of go through it, they they are given that microphone and that platform a lot of times. We're told, okay, now you explain it to others who didn't get to experience it. And that's why you have the the perspective of sometimes fan bases can flip out about something and you know, maybe I can step in and say, hey, listen, here's something you need to think about. You know, this is – and I do a lot of times on the radio, I remind people of – like you and I were talking a minute ago, the perspective of how you look at life when you're 19 and 20 and 21 years old. You know, a lot of times as fans and adults, we take our perspective and our view of the grand scheme of life and and we project that on those 18, 19, 20-year-old kids. And we forget, hey, when we were 18, 19, 20 – we didn't think about long term. We didn't know what a 401k was. Didn't care about health insurance or anything. It was what's right in front of your nose. Who am I dating this weekend? Who do we play? And did I score? I mean, that's really all you care about at that age. And sometimes we need to remember that. Yeah, we were talking just a few minutes ago, Matt and I, looking back at the 96, 97, and 98 Bulldogs in particular. <laughs> Uh, when Jackie Sherrill was there and Mississippi State fans at that point hadn't had a whole lot to cheer about up until about the early 90s when Jackie Sherrill uh, took over the scene and started to get to bowl games on a regular basis and 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 compete in the SEC. And uh, so when you look back upon those years, what does come to mind? I, I don't want you to take it down just the negative path. I know that those throws <laughs> that you missed – do come to mind in particular, but you obviously won some big ball games, had a very competitive team, especially in 1997. Then you guys won the SEC West in 1998. Uh, but your thoughts about um, what what comes to mind? I'm sure there's a thousand team oh, yeah. things, but uh, what in particular? 
Well, um, you know, I, one thing that just kind of stands out to me, the, the overall experience of, of being born at the right time, if I was going to play at Mississippi State, which I was, you know, to be in school on a team that we win a, a Western Division title and we ran out there against Tennessee in the SEC championship game, had that lead in the fourth quarter until T. Martin threw that TD pass, you know, to Peerless Price and beat us, and then they went on and won the national title. We were a good team. Uh, and that just that experience of being there at the right time. My senior year was really special uh, for our team. We were a 10-win team that year. We beat Clemson in the Peach Bowl at the end of the year. But throughout that season, I, I, honestly, I think if you were to look closely, you, you're not going to find very many teams across the history of the SEC that have had more come-from-behind victories than we had that year in 1999. And, and even not just come from behind, but fourth quarter come from behind victories that we had in 99 that year. And uh, I got to be a part of some of those. Um, you know, I had lost the starting job earlier in my career the year before, but by the time 99 rolled around, Wayne Madkin was still our, our starter and Trent as a starter, but I kind of improved my attitude and worked myself back into some playing time. And so I played a lot that year. And one of the games uh, was at Auburn. We were, I guess, either 5-0 and or 6-0. and And we went over there and had one of those, you know, two touchdowns in the last couple of minutes, a little flurry two-minute drill to come back and win the game at the end. And that always has stood out to me because so many people have remembered it. You know, it, obviously it was neat to be a part of it personally and to, you know, you, you let go of the ball and a couple of your guys catch it at the end of the game and you come from behind and win. and. Um, you, you, it kept our team undefeated. It um, was close to my home. You know, I'm from Prattville, Alabama, which is about 40 miles away from Auburn. That was neat. But over the years, so many state fans have brought that game up, have asked me about it. And I'm not kidding you, 20 years later, they still ask about the game and, and mention it to me. So that's really special and probably stands out the most. I can vaguely remember that play. I, I, as soon as you mentioned it, I, I recall the play, but I, I recall it wasn't a clean drop back pass. You're in the pocket, deliver the ball. It was like this helter skelter kind of play. You kind of had to scramble out of the pocket. I remember the, the receiver wasn't open and I can't quite remember who it was. Matt Butler. Matt well, Butler. That's right. He caught the last one. Yeah. And uh, I just remember he was in traffic. I remember yeah. it wasn't uh, a clean deal at all. That's right. But that's uh, right. Yeah. It was a sandwich it's thing. You know, it was a deal where we called a certain play where we've got post routes. Okay. So if you can picture it, you got the goal post back there in the back of the end zone. We've got outside receivers that are both taking an angle towards that goal post. And usually what you do is you play off the safety, right? So you're going to call the play. You're going to hope you get a single safety in the middle of the field. And then he's either going to go one way and you go opposite with the ball, or you move him one way or the other with your eyes, ball fake, and then throw it opposite. But we get up there, and they line up on the goal line with a couple of safeties in the middle, so two. So it wasn't a great call for that situation. But we didn't have timeouts. We couldn't stop the clock. We had to run the play. So over here, I let Matt Butler clear the safety. Like the safety's sitting here. Butler clears him. And I let the ball go in that window, but the backside safety was now coming over. And so by the time the ball gets there, we had a our receiver, their safety, and they sandwiched the football, hit each other, and it could have just as easily been an interception as it was a completion. But somehow our guy, Matt Butler, came down with the ball and we won. <laughs> 